My sister had this dream. A bad dream. And the whole world was dreaming with her. Dylan? She convinced herself that she was awake. She's always been stubborn. I knew I had to end her dream. I had to wake her up. I had to rip down the poster she'd been staring at. Cut off her eyelids to make her see. To save her. Another interesting thing. There's a dichotomy between Trench and Darling and Jesse and Dylan. Jesse has the power of Polaris. So did Darling, in a way. It seems like they were in communication. He said that he's been talking to someone named Hedron. Um, whereas Dylan and Trench were both being influenced by the His. I know he's still there somewhere. Locked inside. I know, because that's how it was for me. Situation. Small child. Small child. Small child. Affirmative. End game. Dick's take. Special transmission. Allocation. Director. Prepare for power wrecked. Every fur necessitates consumption. Alright. This is the actual final battle. Um... Apparently the board has given me a boost because these guys are supposed to be insanely powerful based on their level. I appear to also be in the astral plane. Okay, yeah, that's what they said. They're, they're attacking the board directly, aren't they? I can see the inverted pyramid over there. Where am I to go? Do I have to kill everyone? Might have to kill everyone. Great, they're being healed now. Are you like that? Oh god. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't need to deal with you anymore. Wow, I really did need to kill them. All right, that, that took a very long time. <laughs> Let me... I mean, if, if they're going to throw more guys like that at me, probably charge is better. Kill whole groups. Yep, this should be better. I see you over there. Don't worry. I won't forget you. Jesse has enough for everyone. Here teleporting, I don't see people. Doesn't look like I can use C's here, which is weird. Maybe the hiss influence is too strong. Ow. Wow, oh, really didn't want to die there, so. Hey, I just saw I just saw the C's. I guess I can use it. Gotcha. I I don't know why I couldn't use it the other dubs. Is I, have I just been killing them too fast? Maybe. Everyone's being one shot. No, no, no. 
No, no, no. You can stay there. It's okay. There we go. <laughs> no dodging. Oh my. That was a nice little domino effect right there. Oh, hello. Holy crap. Run forward. Yeah. All right. Uh, don't like all of this. Whoa! So many. So many undefined readings. Oh god, I just ran right into it. We good? We good, guys? Yeah, them dying this easily is almost a detriment because I can't seize them. There we go. Gotta get to Dylan. He's the epicenter now. You know, Hedron also... Here's the other thing. I don't think they ever said, but there was that weird thing that I read. I, I put it while I was doing a montage or something. I think Darling might have been inside of the Hedron thing that we destroyed, and that's why he's dead. I'm not sure about that, but there's evidence that that might be true. I'll, I'll try to find the, the audio clip. Not here, though. Things are happening. I think I've reached Dylan. Yep. Is it even possible to save him? We saw what happened the last time I tried this, but... Might be different. He might not be as far gone. No choice. Dylan's in a coma. I don't know if there's anything of him left in there. If he'll ever find his way back. The portal's been closed, but the hiss is still in the oldest house. And the lockdown can't be lifted as long as any trace of it remains. I'm working on a solution with my management team, but there is still a long road ahead. I'm the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. We're in this together. You... ...and I. Really seemed like she was talking to the player that time. Alright, no fake out this time. This is the real ending. Um... I, I, I really... ...really like this game. Maybe I can find that that audio that made me, you know, believe that Darling is inside of that. I'm pretty sure he basically says I'm going inside of it. And in order to find that audio thing, it's just on a computer monitor in the research bureau in a hidden place. So I bet a lot of people didn't find it. But very cool. So was there anything else? Here, Here's... The, I, I, I definitely saw a video on this that made a lot of sense about the difference and similarities between Polaris slash Hedron which I believe were the same being, and the Hiss. The Hiss, their entire thing is that they take over your brain. They force you to do what they want. They make you think that you want to do what they want, and they erase everything that you are in the place. Now, it didn't entirely work on Dylan, but it works on everyone else, it seems, except for the Faden twins. Um, but what does Polaris do? Polaris, like, tunes herself to you. She enhances you. She makes you better. 
And what I think happened was that even though Polaris might be dead, she might have been in there and she's dead now and is not a force. But since she's been attuned to Jesse for so long, Jesse doesn't need her as a source anymore. She's been tuned to Polaris. That's why there is that thing that was called Jesse Polaris, as if they were one being now. She still has the powers of Polaris, the abilities, but even when Polaris isn't around, because she's been tuned to Polaris. And the same thing was happening to Darling. I think he was also probably getting, maybe if not powers, knowledge. Like knowledge to things that he couldn't, wouldn't have known before. He knew that the Hiss were bad. He might have even known that Trench was trying to move against him and been suspicious about that. Um, and he's the only reason that everyone survived because of the countermeasures that he put into place. Uh, very cool. So, I, again, that was obviously a fake out when I was trying to say, like, oh, it ended like that. I, wa I want a sequel because it's a cliffhanger. Um, this isn't a cliffhanger, but this is this is set up to be, like, this could be an episodic television show like Fringe. By the way, Fringe, five seasons, I think. Great show. I love it. There could just be new threats. And there, there's so many things in the world that they've already established as greater threats. Um, they've established that the Alan Wake world is intertwined. I mean, maybe Jesse Faden will be in Alan Wake, too. It's possible. Um, they've talked about this being called the Not Mother. She could be a problem. Um, but also... Dylan, a conscious Dylan that has the power of the Hiss and can control the Hiss. Um, wouldn't that be interesting if the Hiss, in fact, started to get attuned to his rage and anger um, because he himself was powerful, just like Jesse is? Uh, he could also be the villain where they could fight this weird proxy war. Um, Jesse, like, freeing people and, and trying to regain them using her Polaris powers and him using his. There's just so much they could do. Um, I, I really hope, I really hope we get a control too. I, there's always a possibility that it won't, and I hope that it doesn't get meddled with. But I like Remedy seems pretty free of a lot of the BS. I mean, I don't like that there's like pre-order stuff and pre-order outfits, but they haven't gone too far down the rabbit hole where I think they'll start altering actual gameplay. But you never know. I mean, we all saw what happened to Shadow of War, right? Um, but we'll see. Uh, regardless. I'm excited for whatever more comes from this series. Um, I think we're good, though. I think we're good for the episode. Let me just see if anything happens after um, after the credits that I want to just shove in here and not for next time. Because next time, we are going to be doing the Alan Wake crossover DLC. Um, the whole reason I played Alan Wake first. I have some issues with it, but... Oh, here we go. <laughs> you are the director of the Bureau of Control. The crisis is not over. Your work is not done. This is my new outfit. This is my professional outfit. I will be wearing it instead of my casual clothes. Um, Executive Bureau countermeasures are ongoing. Search the dangerous depths of the house and classified Bureau of Higgins and Secrets. Yeah, so they're basically saying, like, you can do more, it's fine. There's other stuff. You can mess up your desk if you want. This is You're the director. You can trash this place. Who's going to stop you? No one. That's who. But yeah, there are still a few mysteries. Like, where did Marshall go? Um, Is is Darling actually dead? I mean, I'm pretty sure he's dead. I don't see how else you could have contacted me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be doing the DLCs. And that'll be that. Then I'll be done. Then I'll have to decide what I do next, I guess. Well, I know this is, you know, usually I like there to be a definitive ending, but... Shawshank Redemption. That's the name of the movie I was thinking of earlier. <laughs> Not important, but that was it. Yeah, no, I... She made a poster analogy of... Oh, for God's sakes. That, that was so long ago, Jesse. That was months ago. <laughs> well, it's the same day for her, fair enough. That's pretty funny. Um, there are a bunch of de extra dialogues, that's why I want to go back. It makes sense to put them here. But I usually don't like to have an ending and then and then just do extra stuff. But this game is just formatted in a way that it kind of makes sense. Like, uh, that entire game was just the beginning, really. What? The director's just handing out promotions? I guess you better get in there. I'm right behind you. You guys are- you're not getting promoted. Not observant. Being a bureau agent 
requires a large amount of observation, which you clearly lack. Yeah. Now that we're getting back on our feet, I should really talk to Arish about ration quantities. Yeah, I think all of senior staff is dead except for Marshall, so it's like, <laughs> we need to promote people, right? Yeah, I found a file on the old director, Northmore. It didn't list any date of death. You, uh, you know anything about that? Could be an error. The record staff process a lot of data. Maybe it just slipped through. Yeah, maybe. Now, he, he was stuffed into the reactor. Like, it's not important. Hey, Rish. I heard you closed the Hiss portal, or uh, whatever it is we're calling it. And if we could just flush out the stragglers. So, what's next for Simon Arish? Well, first off, I'm banning all slide projectors. That's it. <laughs> Seriously, though, we need to review our protocols. Research should not be making decisions that endanger the entire bureau. Like, fuck it. The entire fucking world without some serious oversight. I think Pope would agree. Certain people in the Bureau have been working in the shadows for too long. And I'd like to make these HRAs part of the mandatory Bureau uniform. They're not stylish, but better safe than sorry. I don't think anyone will complain. Not after this. What are your thoughts on me serving as director? <laughs> well, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, Trench was fine, but... Well, you pulled us back from the brink. Well, I'm honored to serve, ma'am. I mean, fuck, shit. <laughs> Faden. Sorry. He'll get it one day. So, what's the situation in my bureau, Arish? The situation is we are still up to our eyes in his. Not to mention the months of repairs it's gonna take just to get this place up and running again. But is it doable? Of course it is. You just might need to tell some rangers to grab a wrench once they're done hunting his. Did anyone ever mention to you that Darling was using the slide projector? Well, Salvador never did, but, um, I doubt he even knew. But I'm well aware that it's our job to study and contain the things that we don't understand, but... Well, some of the things that Darling did were way outside of our mission statement. Look, these things are not toys, and acting like they are is only ever gonna end one way. At least Pope seems to understand that. Well, it's secure now. No one can reach it without my say-so. But thank Christ for that. All would have been fine if if Trench just didn't go on that last expedition that got him uh, the hiss to burrow into his mind. Marshall's been missing for a while now. Any ideas where she could be? The last time I saw her was in maintenance when I was leading the Rangers out of the Atlas. Yeah, I told her it wasn't safe, but she said she had to go check on something. Did you ask where she was going? Whew, Marshall is not the kind of person you question. <laughs> kind of intimidating, you know? But, uh... She was by herself. If that helps at all. Not really. But thanks. Hopefully she turns up. I'll see you later. You know where I'll be. Yeah, stop teleporting, Arish. I'm gonna start to think that you're a para-utilitarian. Which I guess will be fun. Um, ooh, ability points and board countermeasures. Oh, that's right, I did this. A jukebox. Oh, I'm not dealing with the jukebox. To I might not even show the jukebox. I don't like it. There's an outfit at stake. Uh, the other out... I mean, we have the director suit. But we also have the office assistant suit. It's the only one I'm probably not going to be previewing because um, you've already seen it. It, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how it exists, but, you know, that's control for you. Even though it was just a dream. By the way, that entire sequence was portold by Dylan when we were talking to him before. Um, he said that there was a dream where you were an office worker. And it never ended. And it was great. He liked it. That Jesse was being screwed with that much. I almost just reset all my abilities. <laughs> cool, I can show the rush ability. That that's good. All right. So, I mean, the rest of this episode there, there's not going to it's all going to be dialogue. I just want to talk to all of the different characters that I can talk to. There's only 3 though. Um, but if you're not interested, you know, we're good. I'll see you in the DLC hopefully. There haven't been any hiss sightings in the Ocean View Motel. Could survivors be hiding inside? It's possible. I remember from 84, the Bureau lost contact with a whole department during a house shift. The department head was found in the motel two years later, his arm stuck in the vending machine. Make a note to send in a search party when possible. Alright, let me just see what I picked up there. What is this? Untapped potential. Okay. 
All right, so I'm just reading this because it was a it, it's something that was written by Emily. Usually those are interesting. Yeah, she's just musing about the hiss, how some of them are like people that run around with resonance fields around them, and other of them turned into invisible, insane monsters that look barely human. Also, how are they using paratilitarian powers? Are they corrupting objects of power? Um, all the questions I've been saying, really. There we go. I am the bureau, or I am the director of the bureau of self. Of, why do I always want to say the bureau of self control? That's not. That's not what we're called. Whatever. <laughs> New picture. And here's the slide projector. The object is a blank with a vertical slide. Why is that blocked? The object creates. I'm assuming parallel dimension portals. The only blank to successfully procure the effects resulted in the capture of blank. See, darling. Blah blah blah. Object has not been successfully bound. A peri-utilitarian of this object does not require binding. Many of the accompanying blank were blank. See files on Jesse and Dylan. The entirety of blank was transported... Oh, the dump, yep. Yeah. So, highly redacted object. Extremely dangerous, even when it was gotten redacted. Um, one of the most redacted things I've ever found, in fact. What is this? My reflection trapped in the darkness of the coffee I nurse. The rain turned the lights of the city into a mosaic on the windows. The day's paper lists all the things wrong in the world. The list grows longer by the day. The difference between the morning and the night. Coffee. Whiskey. No other difference. The alarm goes off at 5 a.m. It feels like I just closed my eyes. It's dark. I sit up on the bed in the gloom. I get up, I shower. The driver waits for me downstairs, takes me to the oldest house. An old man stares at me in the car window. It's raining. It's dark. Late at night, he brings me back here. It's not a home. It's a room where I sleep in. Waking up just as tired as I was before going to bed. Endless grind. I mean, that's terrible, and I think it might be the last message I get from Trench, too. The board's talking to me. The hiss is removed from the astral plane, silent. You have proven it, the not you. We like you very much. Tolerate. You are prepared, prepared for what comes next. We will speak again in the future. Expansion. Good work, Vic Director. Well, thank you. It looks like the board approves of me, and that's very it's very important to get board approval. Final message. And Hedron. I have I seen all of these. I'm Dr. Casper Darling, and this, this is my final message. It's not the end. But after this, I won't, I won't. I exposed myself to Hedron Resonance fully. It, it is, it's changing me. I've, I've seen shown so much. Slidescape 36 was where Hedron stopped the spread of another. It's, oh, it's terrifying. It really is. It's another source of resonance. Trench was exposed to this other. It will now spread. I've done everything I can to stop it. 
The Hedron Resonance Amplifiers. I, I don't know if it'll make a difference. I, I, I won't be here when it happens. I, I should have told him any more. I'm being said one more lesson. Something wonderful, I think. Yeah, I mean, that, that confirms everything that I said. I guess I subconsciously absorbed that. But yeah, he basically, he had his own Polaris. He, and it enhanced him and it gave him a lot of knowledge. But what about Hedron? I don't think I've seen this before. I mean, I obviously, well, I haven't clicked on this file, but I don't think I've heard it outside. Okay, yes. Expedition 3. We... Located the source of the resonance in Slidescape 36. It is an entity, a living organism of a considerable mass. I, I've named it Hedron based on its physical shape, the part that we can perceive. I honestly think there's the resonance it emits, the frequencies. We've, we've never seen anything like it. We, we, we built a container for it, and, and we brought it in. This changes everything. It is beyond our understanding. We have brought so many questions with us through that hole in the wall. I will dedicate... <laughs> I'm never going home. Okay. So that's it. I've listened to everything I have. Let's go talk to Emily. Jesse, good to see you. We've got Dylan situated in his containment cell like you asked. I've got medical staff running tests as we speak, and I'd be happy to walk you through the details later. Other than that, what's next? With the slide projector turned off, the hiss are shut out, but we're stuck with the ones already here. We can't lift the lockdown until they're all eradicated. If any hiss ever got out, that would be the end of everything. Well, eliminating them all will take time. Look, I'll do what I can on my end, but my research is progressing slower than I'd like. I think I can help with that. I am making you the head of research, effective immediately. I want you to use everything the Bureau has, every resource, every confidential scrap of data, and find a way to keep the hiss out for good. That's... really? I, I mean, yes, yes, I can certainly... Y yes! <laughs> yes, I accept. You'll do great. Besides, I didn't really have anyone else lined up. I'm honored, Jesse, really. Thank you. Just don't let her make any knives. She's really into knives. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, we can't, we can't, we can't leave. Everyone in here is trying. How many people worked at this building, though? I feel like I've killed, like, 300 hiss at least. And there's still more hiss? Good God, that's insane. But all right. <laughs> I mean, maybe they had, maybe they have a virtual army here. I guess they'd have to. But are there thousands of people working here? Thousands of people in a combat position? Because it looks like the office workers just float around and not do anything. Okay. <laughs> It's a video game. I shouldn't take it that seriously. I took care of the Tomasi problem. Sorry, I forget he was a co-worker. Don't apologize. That wasn't the real Tomasi. He died when the hiss got him. You're right. I just didn't want to be insensitive. Sentimentality is a weakness in situations like these, Jesse. That's Bureau 101. I don't think Emily's in danger of being called sentimental. Uh, better be careful, considering she's the new darling. <laughs> It'd be good if she had some compassion, but I get what she's saying. It's just you need a you need a little bit 
uh, if you're going to actually consider, like, humans as a factor. But anyway, how do you like me as the new director? We... How do you feel about me taking over as director? You act like it just happened. You've been director since we first met, remember? I am still thrilled. Nothing's changed. Not for me. But the Bureau has changed. Trench and Darling are gone. Their knowledge, anything not written down, disappeared with them. They knew the Bureau better than anyone. They're the Bureau's past, Emily. We won't operate like they did. We'll learn from their mistakes. We'll be better than they ever were. We won't ever be like them. And that's another potential for, like, more sequels. Like, a lot of young people that go into government or organizations always think they, you know, we've got fresh new ideals, we're going to change things, and then they get swept up by the system. So... Another avenue of possible storyline potential for this series. When the hiss got into my head, I saw some weird things. I think Darling even spoke to me. Does that make any sense to you? Empirically, no. But phantom voices as well as hallucinatory states are not uncommon here. And considering the forces that Dr. Darling was working with, he could have been transferred to a different plane of consciousness, physically or otherwise. And that doesn't upset you? Oh, very. And the fact that he hid those forces from me? It's infuriating. But Darling's dream was always to look beyond our reality. This time he may have taken a step too far, but as long as his consciousness can perceive his surroundings, I'm sure he's loving it. Maybe Darling was just trying to protect you from the darker side of his work. Fuck that. I'm not a child. Like, don't just assume I'm going to consider something morally repugnant. Which it all was. Which it all was, of course. Okay, that's a good sign, Emily. Now I'm glad that I made you the new darling. But uh, obviously you should have told her more. It's ridiculous that he kept that kept it that much of a lit. I mean, I get not telling Trench, but not telling Emily? Come on now. Also, uh, Darling might not be dead. Another future uh, thing. He, he might just be on a different plane. He, he might be Resonance itself. It's possible. How was Dylan? The same. I, I can't detect any his activity, but his physiology has certainly been altered by it. I can't tell if his brain activity is genuine or simply the aftermath of the hiss, like spasms. Dylan could wake up tomorrow, for all I know. I really can't say. Then I just have to wait for him. That's fair. He waited a long time for me. But don't worry. We'll be monitoring him around the clock. If he wakes up, we'll be ready. I don't mean that in a hostile way, just... Well, you know. I hear you. My brother isn't exactly popular around here. I hope one day he'll have the chance to change that. So, there was a moment after Hedron died that I couldn't feel my powers. The hiss got into my head. Just for a moment. So that explains the HRA outage. Before we knew what was happening, the hiss had us. They were in my head. I saw terrible things. I mean, I was about to go under forever when the hiss was pushed back. The HRAs had come back on. Dylan vanished afterwards, and we fought off the hiss that came after him. So if Hedron's death knocked out the HRAs, that means there must be a new local source for them to relay. Which I'm guessing must be... Me. You. Hedron is dead, assuming that word even applies to a resonant-based life form. But whatever it awakened in you, the power you call Polaris, is still active. Or at least, that's what my instruments are telling me. I don't think we're ever gonna understand all of this. And I'm okay with that. I'm just glad you're here with me. That's good to know. Thanks, Emily. Note when she talks, uh, Polaris isn't pulsing around her head anymore, but that 
I I think that she has been properly attuned to Polaris, and she's now a source of Polaris, even though the original source was dead. I mean, sound can kind of replicate, right? It bounces off of things, and now it's found a new source. I guess sound doesn't replicate. I don't know how sound works. What about the board? I found Dylan attacking the astral plane and the board. What was he hoping to accomplish? Huh. Since they arrived, his have been corrupting objects of power, which have an inherent link to the astral plane. Maybe their goal was to access the astral plane and the board itself. That still doesn't tell us why. His motives are a difficult thing to work out, but I have been digging through confidential files and noticed a strange gap in knowledge regarding the board. Looks like any data on them has either been deleted or was never gathered in the first place. Then maybe it's time someone looked into that. Maybe it is. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. Please, Emily. Not even as a joke. <laughs> so, I mean... Oh, well, she's saying something else. But a new mission has opened up that is the other DLC. The Foundation. Talk to the board. Um, we're not, we're not going to do that. We're going to do the Alan Wake one first, which is this one, A Dark Place. And that one can just go away. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to do it. It'll probably be a stream. Um... I'd have to dig through the archives for the rest, but I'm not going through the Panopticon. Not with the altered items loose. Then go see if any ranger squads are available for a file <laughs> retrieval mission. I mean, but I took care of the altered items. It's safe now. Um, I should have left Emily for last. I said there's three characters I need to talk to. Um, the last one's probably not going to be that interesting. Yeah, give me the health. Stop neglecting health. Back in Moldland. She's the final one to talk to. Do you need something? I assume you'll be staying with us until the mold is eradicated. Indeed. Until I find a permanent resolution to this pesky fungus business, I'll be here. Perhaps even beyond that, seeing as you are quite... understaffed at the moment. Though, I hardly have a say in my own comings or goings. Your oldest house won't open the exits until those hiss monstrosities are cleared out. Glad to have you along for the ride. Will the mold be under control anytime soon? We were barely containing it with weakly controlled burns. Just look at how it has spread after a few days of non-interference. It's beyond the threshold now. The floodgates are open. So that's a no. Americans. <laughs> uh, so much crap to deal with. And it's not like we can get more personnel in. We're also sealed from people coming in, so not good. With Darling gone, I'm putting Emily Pope in charge of the research sector. Are you okay with that? Perfectly. You have pulled Excalibur from the stone, and now decree as you see fit, O oh Queen. What a true meritocracy we live in. Glad to hear it. I had a dream. Or something like one. Darling was there. He told me something, but I... can't remember what. I think he's gone. Right. Well, he's never where one expects him to be, is he? Well, thank God. I can finally stop writing these tedious reports that I'm sure he never even took the time to glance at. If you speak to him again, can you tell him I... hope he found what he was looking for. I'll try. I should be getting back to work. That actually was a pretty good one to end with. I'll see you later, Rhea. 
Dr. Underhill, if you please. Yeah, let's keep it professional, I guess. Um, according to Glyphus, and I don't know if I found them myself, but there's evidence that um, Rhea Underhill and Casper Darling were in a relationship. So that's why she reacted like that. She tried to hide it, but uh, he was important to her. So yeah, that sucks to find that out. But, as we're both alluding, he might not be dead. Is, is that... I thought I saw him old, man. Um, the only thing... There is that one clip of Darling that was, like, weird. It's this one. Let me get to the relevant part. It's done. With just one large-scale HRA. It's an easy choice. No choice. It's there now. the most important thing from what's coming I'll be there inside locked in ready to be blown away ready for the journey He certainly seems to be acting like he was going to die, but that wouldn't be the end. And he also literally said he was inside of the damn thing, ready to be blown away. Like, I do think that once we, um, once Dylan tricked us into destroying that thing, he was inside of it physically and his physical form died. Um, perhaps he's resonance now. I don't really know. But that is everything that I wanted to show. I have apparently completed all side objectives, which I'm very surprised about. I remember there being an arcade machine, though, but that might be a DLC thing. And that mission was annoying. I didn't do the little optional side, like, board things where they're like, Bwah! which I'm really annoyed that happens during things like the ashtray maze and, like, cutscenes that they just interrupt you. It's more realistic, but it's annoying. Um, but that's that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you for the DLC, but if not, thank you for uh, taking the journey all the way to this point. And I will see you guys then, hopefully. Later.